Uh, Madam Speaker, this House is struggling to fulfill its constitutional role. It's struggling to hold the government accountable. Over the last several years, the House has tried to hold the government accountable on various matters where they have clear, clearly failed in the discharge of their responsibilities. I'd like to give a couple of examples to illustrate my point. Four years ago, on July 5, 2019, two government scientists were escorted out of the government's microbiology lab in Winnipeg by the RCMP. They were reportedly walked out of the lab because of national security breaches, but what exact breaches occurred were not known. When that story broke, this House tried to do its job to find out exactly what happened. A committee of this House began to investigate and asked for documents from the government and put in place measures to ensure that those documents would be held under lock and key to prevent anything injurious to national security from being released. But instead of giving documents to this House, the government thumbed its nose at the committee. It refused to hand over the documents. So the committee escalated its request and issued an order to the government for the documents. The government defied the order of the committee for the documents. Ultimately, this House and its committee issued four orders ordering the government to hand over the documents concerning the national security breaches at the Winnipeg lab. And not only did the government defy those four orders, it took the Speaker to court. The Speaker stood up to defend the rights of members in this House and indicated that the Speaker was going to fight the government in court. But before any of that could take place, the Prime Minister advised the dissolution of this place, and along with that, the four orders of this House were dissolved. And now we have an extra parliamentary committee, a committee that sits outside of this place, which is reviewing these documents. Members like me have no access to that process or those documents. And so, having initiated an inquiry in this House, this House has been unable to get to the bottom of what happened at the Winnipeg Lab and therefore has been unable to hold the government accountable. More recently, Madam Speaker, a similar situation has occurred. When the story broke last November 7th that the government knew for years that Beijing was conducting foreign interference operations targeting our elections and involving this democratic institution, this House and its committees began to uphold their constitutional role and began to ask questions in this House and began to commence studies in committees to find out exactly what happened. But despite the passage of eight months, we have found out little. All we have received are heavily redacted documents, scraps of information here and there, and nothing that will lead us to a definitive conclusion. And most of the information we have received has come from outside Parliament, from media reports. Most of what we have gotten from the government is a mountain of process outside Parliament. ENSICOP, ENSIRA, and the Special Rapporteur, all of which are appointed by and accountable to the Prime Minister. We've gotten so desperate, Madam Speaker, that we are willing to support the establishment of an independent public inquiry outside of Parliament so that we can get answers as to what happened. And while this inquiry would stand outside of Parliament, at least it would be independent and would have all the powers that this House supposedly has to call for witnesses, to order the production of documents, and to get to the bottom of who knew what and when. At least a public inquiry would hold the government accountable. Relevant. Madam Speaker, we should aspire to a parliament that can do the work we are punting to a public inquiry. And that leads us to the motion in front of the House today. The House of Commons, Madam Chair, is the only national democratic institution there is in Canada. The introduction of this motion will diminish a place that is already struggling to fulfill its constitutional role to hold the government accountable. Hybrid Parliament has made this House and its committees less efficient. Our output has declined. Here is one example. Votes in hybrid Parliament, votes, votes in this place, Madam Chair, before hybrid Parliament used to take eight minutes. They now take at least 10 minutes, and in many cases, 12 minutes. At 12 minutes, votes take fully 50% more time than they did before hybrid parliament. I counted. Last year we had 227 votes. 227 votes times four minutes 
is 15 hours of lost time, almost two days of sittings. In 2019, the first full day before the pandemic, we had 403 votes. 403 votes times four minutes lost per vote is 26 hours of lost time. That's three or four sitting days of this House. This is just but one example of the inefficiencies that hybrid parliament is creating. Others are lost time for microphone checks, lost time because of technology failures, and lost time because committee meetings are cancelled because of a lack of technology resources. All of these things have led to a less efficient parliament and a reduction in the work that we do here. Just since May 8th, the Canada-China Committee has been cancelled three times in the past four weeks because of the technology limitations of hybrid parliament. This is one of the most important committees of this House that is doing work on the Canada People's Republic of China relationship. But Madam Speaker, more important than all of that is the loss of the magnificence of this place and, in it, and its committees when we meet in person. When all eyes are on the other, watching the cut and thrust of debate, watching government officials testify in person at committee, watching how Canadians representatives are standing up for the things that they believe in. That's why we're investing five billion dollars, five billion dollars in the buildings of this place. That's why the Fathers of Confederation spent vast sums of money they did not have in building Parliament Hill because they understood the importance of being in person. They could have built much more modest buildings than they built out of wood or out of fieldstone, but they didn't. They understood the importance of interacting with the other in person. The tyranny of technology wants us all virtual. We must resist. We are the only major Western democracy that still has hybrid parliament. And now this House is proposing to make it permanent. The UK House of Commons ended hybrid sittings on July 22nd of 2021, two years ago. The US House of Representatives ended hybrid sittings on January 9th of this year. The Australian Parliament ended hybrid sittings on July 25th of last year. Only this government is proposing to make hybrid sittings permanent. The French National Assembly never had hybrid sittings. In fact, in April of 2021, the French Constitutional Council declared a proposal from the Assembly unconstitutional because the measures were not precise enough. That proposal would have modified the Assembly's rules of procedure in order to allow for remote participation in plenary and committee meetings under exceptional circumstances. Madam Speaker, in fact, our Constitution, the Constitution Act 1867, in Section 48, requires the presence of a certain number of members in this place for this House to meet. The framers of our Constitution thought it's so important that a certain number of members be present in person for this House to meet, they put it into the Constitution. They did not allow members to mail it in, as one could do on those days, to allow this House to meet. Madam Speaker, I'll finish by saying this. We already sit far less than national legislatures in other Western democracies. The U.S. House of Representatives typically sits between 164 to 192 days a year. We only sit 129 days a year. The U.K. House of Commons typically sits between 146 to 162 days a year. We only sit 129 days a year. And we sit far less than we used to. We used to sit 160 to 170 days a year during the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. During the Pearson era, where Parliament was so effective in dealing with framework legislation on major initiatives like the Canada Pension Plan, our public health care system, and the national flag, we sat 160 to 170 days a year, eight weeks longer than the 28, 26 weeks we sit today. Madam Speaker, the motion in front of us today will further weaken and diminish this place. And therefore, I urge all members to vote against this motion 